Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is a, a bit of a breaking news topic. It seems every single day now we're getting more updates on the Romelu Lukaku situation at Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel's talking. A little snippets of information from Lukaku's side of the, the story. So my big question for you guys is what's next for Lukaku and Chelsea? Uh, and was Thomas Tuchel correct to drop him? Because the latest uh, press conference from Tuchel, he said that Lukaku's now apologised. He's back in training. Um, it all seems to have been smoothed over quite nicely after his comments saying that he didn't agree with Tuchel's tactics, maybe wasn't that happy at Chelsea after leaving Inter Milan. It was a whole mess. He was dropped for the game against Liverpool, the 2-2 draw at Stamford Bridge. So, Nick, is this a bit of a storm in a teacup, is what we would say in England? Or was this something bigger, a bigger issue here at Chelsea with Thomas Tuchel and Lukaku? Man, it's so interesting how this have happened in a situation where Thomas Tuchel... Uh, hadn't won the Champions League last year because uh, a manager making big decisions with big star players has has often favored the players at, at, at a club like Chelsea. I don't think it's a, a very big deal. Um, it's a weird situation because the interview was conducted weeks ago and just comes out now. I think it's very weird given the way that Tuchel reacted at first and then what he decided to do at the game. Ultimately, this does have all the ingredients of being fine in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, Lukaku's that good, and Tuchel's that good of a boss. So I think I would lean towards it being not as big of a deal as it initially seemed, as most bits of controversy tend to be in the Premier League. That's very true. And Tuchel did say that this is not as big of a deal as, as some of the commentators, pundits, are making it out to be. But he did say Lukaku uh, wears his, his heart on his tongue. That is actually what he said. Ah. Um, so he's trying to say that he's very passionate and they don't want to take that away from Lukaku. He speaks his mind and that's what's made him such a, a great player and a talisman over the years. But Andy, to drop him for the Liverpool game, that's a huge game in a title race. It could be really big when all is said and done. Chelsea tied that game. If Lukaku would have been playing, who knows? He could have put away one of the chances. They could have won it. Do you think he was right to do that, to kind of set the tone in the culture of the club and say, you know what? You're a great player. I respect, maybe don't respect your opinion, but you have your opinion. But it's not helpful to undermine me as a coach and talk about tactics. And we, there has to be some kind of punishment. Do you think that was the right decision to set the tone for the rest of the squad and, and just underline his authority at Chelsea? Yeah, Nick made a great point saying that typically, you know, player empowerment is the side that a lot of people fall on with these issues these days. This is going to be one of the rare instances where I have to go against the player and say, I, I just don't understand why he said it. Um, I, I can understand if he feels that way uh, because it's the first half season and he's been out and in the team and, and, and a lot of just constant kind of uh, constant influx, I think would be this would be how I would describe the situation at Chelsea so far this season. But to come out and say that publicly, to say it without, you know, previous authorization to do the interview from the club, it, it just didn't make sense. I don't know what he was trying to accomplish there. Saying that's not going to get Tuchel to change his tactics. It's only going to undermine him and then put him in a position where he has to make a decision. If, if Lukaku doesn't say that, then Tuchel doesn't have to deal with this mess. He doesn't have to drop him. And none of this happens. Uh, and so it just didn't make a lot of sense. I understand Tuchel wants to stamp his authority on the team and the club, and he can't have a player out there publicly saying those things. I also disagree, though, with the manner in which he handled it, because he initially, like you said, Joe, came out and said, well, it's not that big of a deal. You know, if, if you put it into full context and if you have the sentence before the quote that's been shared a lot and the sentence that came after the quote that's been shared a lot, it's really not that harsh. It's not him saying the tactics are not good. It's, you know, it's almost a stream of consciousness from Lukaku as he's just kind of talking about his situation at Chelsea. And I think there's a lot of players in the world who would say, if you ask them and they were honest, would say, yeah, maybe my manager's tactics don't quite perfectly fit me, but it's my job to find a way to fit into that and still help the team. And that was the gist of what he said. So it wasn't actually that big of a deal. I thought the story was done after Tuchel came out and said, well, it's not that big of a deal if you if you read everything that he said, and then he drops him. So I don't understand that part of it either. It, it, it didn't need to be a big story. It didn't need to drag on for another week, but Tuchel made sure that it did by dropping him for a game of that magnitude. And like you say, Joe, it's hard to look at that game and the way it played out, how Chelsea started so slow and then finished that first half so strongly that if he was on the field, that he wouldn't have made a difference. So, like I said, a bit of a storm in a teacup. But um, in terms of Chelsea, we mentioned there about tactically, and 
even if he wasn't making a, a point about him not being suited to the system at Chelsea, uh, I mean, the way they play at, with him, he's hardly had someone else up top with him. At Inter Milan, he had Latoura Martinez. At Man United, he had Martial and Rashford a lot of the time up there with him. Does it? Does he need someone up there with him? Can Chelsea play a 3 4 2 1 with Pulisic, Werner, Mount, those players, Ziesch underneath him? Does he need to have Werner up top there with him to stretch defences and give him more opportunities to score? I mean, is there an argument that Chelsea are actually better without Romelu Lukaku, more fluid in attack because they created a lot of chances against Liverpool, but in previous games that they drew against Brighton and uh, it just looked a bit sluggish with, and a bit predictable with Lukaku up there. They were looking to hit, hit him uh, centrally to hold up the ball. And then, you know what? There wasn't much coming from that. So, so Nick, is there... Look, a Chelsea a better team with Lukaku in it? Is that that's what I'm trying to say? Is that is that the statement, or is there an argument to say, you know what, no one's bigger than the club? If he really feels like that, we can move him on in the summer. Well, I would feel hypocritical to say that it's not a good fit because I think I called it, and maybe more of us called it as well, a perfect fit in the summer. Uh, you need a guy who's going to be clinical and take his chances. I don't like the system. I think it gives a lot of love to. Um, it prioritizes the fullbacks. And while that's good, I think that they have very good passing center backs for this back three. And so, yes, I love Reese James and I love Aspilicueta. And there are very good pieces there, even Marcos Alonso. I just don't think they cater to their forwards at all because uh, Kai Havertz was legit very good at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, Timo Werner was a star for Leipzig. Lukaku, incredible at Inter Milan. Pulisic, great at Borussia Dortmund. And all of these guys are struggling to hit their marks. Now, granted, you've won the Champions League. The system is good enough for that. So either A, stop judging the numbers in the same context and say that the system isn't going to provide seven goal games, but you're going to win. That's fine. We've seen Jose Mourinho do that over the years or decide that the numbers do matter and enable these players because you can't have literally every attacking player except for Mason Mount underperforming and then say it's all of the players fault. So I do think it was a mistake for uh, for Lukaku to be dropped. I think oftentimes it's a bigger punishment to hit them with a fine to castigate them and then have them on camera having to own it. And Lukaku was also in very, very good form. He had scored in consecutive games and had just been coming back. I'm, I'll drag this back to what Andy mentioned. Uh, if Lukaku didn't say anything, everyone said, wow, he's had a couple injuries and he had COVID this year. But when he's been there, he scored. And instead, he made um, his own storm in a teacup, as Joe said. It's his job to maybe drink the tea now, I guess. That's, well, we do that a lot in England. So, you know, he wouldn't be the first person to have a cup of tea in England. Um what next then? Because he professed his love for Inter Milan. Obviously, uh, he had a great few years there. In that interview, he basically gave the interview to say sorry to the Inter Milan fans because he left uh, in a bit of a hurry and they weren't too happy with that. But now the Chelsea fans, they've had their nose put out of joint a little bit by this. There's some talk of them having a bit of a boo uh, when Lukaku plays for them next time and, and letting them know they were not happy with what he said. I mean, can we actually see him leaving next summer, Andy? Can anyone actually afford him, given the lengthy contract he's on at Chelsea? And I mean, there's even talk of Tottenham being interested, but I don't know they can ever afford the deal, number one, or Chelsea would ever sell them uh, Lukaku, considering how much that would strengthen Spurs. So, I don't know. Go ahead. Can we actually see him leaving next summer? Yeah, if Chelsea fans want Lukaku to leave in the summer, go ahead and boo him next time at Stamford Bridge. I think that that might just about seal it because what we've seen from his career is he's fairly nomadic. He moves around a lot. And if a situation is maybe not absolutely perfect, he's, if he's not fully happy, then he's going to look to move on. He's done it multiple times, as he should. It, it is his career. It is very short for these professional athletes, he should do what fulfills him, what makes him happy. Now, we can judge if those were the right moves for on-field success as, you know, within a collective, for himself, all of those things. That's what we're, we are here to do. He's there to make the decisions for his career. I think if Chelsea fans boo him, that relationship gets really poor really quickly. And it's not something to boo a player over. He said that he didn't quite fit perfectly into the manager's tactics. Again, 95% of players in the world would probably say something if they were being 
brutally honest. He shouldn't have been quite so brutally honest, but I don't think, I don't, especially Chelsea fans, I don't think they need to make this into anything more than their manager has already done because it's going to continue. This storyline could take over their season if they decide to let it because they will boo, then Lukaku has to, to have a comment about it, then Tuchel has to have a comment about it, and then they have to decide if he can stay. At the, it just will never stop. Nick? One thing to Joe, add. every single club he's left would be better off if they kept him. Yeah. That's all I have to say. He had a great season at Manchester United. He had one season off, and if they would have kept him, they'd be fine. Everton would be fine. Inter Milan would be fine. He's a terribly gifted player. Yeah, I think that's a very good reminder there for all Chelsea fans. Be careful what you wish for or what you boo for. And as we, let's take it full circle. Storm in a teacup. I think we may not be talking about this in a few weeks and it'll be scoring a few goals and everyone will forget about it. But for the latest news on Romelu Lukaku and his future at Chelsea, head over to Pro Soccer Talk on embassysports.com. But it's been dramatic, but it seems like this will calm down in the next few weeks and months and they'll get back to doing what he does best and doing his talking on the pitch with goals and great performances for Chelsea. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.